Rolf Kurtaika, Brightwood Real Estate Education. Let's talk about an environmental hazard that we call mold. So mold is everywhere. I and mean, there's always been mold, there's always gonna be mold, and there's mold every environment you can think of. All right, so what can happen though is the mold can grow and get out of control. How does that happen? Well, you have excess humidity and moisture, right? More than normal. And that can cause the level of mold to get to a toxic level. And depending on who you are, uh, not everybody's the same, but some people are very allergic to mold. I'm, I'm allergic to mold. Uh, but not all molds are hazardous. And, and certainly almost any mold in a controlled situation where it doesn't get out of hand is not hazardous. Mold can grow anywhere. It's got to have oxygen, it's got to have moisture, and then it's got to have an organic, you know, quote unquote, food source. So paper is an organic food source. Wood is an organic food source. Uh, hazardous levels in housing requires remediation. So in the, in the world of word association, if I'm taking an exam, what's the remedy for mold? Remediation. What does remediation mean? Well, of course, you've got a mold issue. So remediation means you're going to clean up the mold issue that exists currently. But you can't just clean it up because whatever caused it will come back again. So you have to remedy the cause. Now, we've done a little bit of research on this, and in my opinion anyway, more than half of mold issues can usually be managed by simply managing the interior humidity. If people have, like, like, you know, with teenage kids, when I had teenage kids at home, holy mackerel, they're taking showers, uh, somebody's making spaghetti, uh, and it's been raining outside, or whatever you might call it. And the level of humidity can go up in the property. So a dehumidifier can lower that. Uh, exhaust fans can help lower that level of humidity, and that's enough to manage the mold. All right? Sometimes you need more, like outside drainage. If there's water draining through the uh, outside or along the building, that can get through the concrete, even if there's no cracks. It can leach through the concrete and it can cause uh, moisture, and we often see mold then in lower levels of properties. So during the cleanup and remedy, you've got to follow EPA standards and, and any state laws or regulations you might have regarding mold remediation. There's no federal mold disclosure law, however, some states do have disclosure requirements, but from a real estate professional standpoint and from a seller standpoint, the existence of mold is a material fact that has to be disclosed. So buyers should have their inspector, their home inspector, check for mold. Now there's home inspectors that can check for mold and then there's also inspectors that specialize in mold detection and then of course we're recommending a remediation plan. So here's the key thing. Sellers must disclose if there is or was a mold issue. This has become a big deal, especially where I live in Minnesota. There's been lawsuits about this. Get this. All right. We're not just talking about the seller, the current seller. I'm a buyer. I go to a seller and the seller says, you know, we had a mold issue. I got it here in my written disclosure. It's been mitigated. It's been remedied. But if the current seller didn't have a mold issue, but the seller before that seller or the seller before that seller, if there was ever a mold issue and if that was remedied, that disclosure requirement never goes away. And don't go to court to get this proved because we've had court cases here already where, you know, what happens, the neighbors come up and they say, hey, did the seller tell you about the mold in that house that there was? I think it was about 15 years ago. Oh, my goodness, it was the biggest mold issue. Oh, it was terrible. And now the seller didn't disclose it and we got problems. So real estate professionals can use our common sense for indications of mold, right? Uh, musty smell water lines down in the basement, water damage, uh, high humidity or water leaks. Now, you got to check your homeowner's insurance to determine if mold is covered. So here's what can happen. Uh, let's say you don't have flood insurance and you get a flood in your house, plumbing breaks and you get a flood in the house, or you get a crazy rainstorm and you get a flood in the house. 
So you have to check your, your homeowner's insurance because they might say, well, what caused the mold? Well, we had this big flood and we had water. Uh, we're not in a floodplain, but we had water in the house. We had a foot and a half of water down the basement. Hmm. May or may not be covered by the homeowner's policy. So a couple things about mold. It's everywhere. When has it become a hazard? Let's say I'm taking a test and I get questions about mold. Uh, when is it a hazard? When it gets out of hand. What causes it? Moisture. All right. Excess moisture, excess humidity. Do I have to disclose if there is or was mold? Yes. What's the word association for the mold fix? We remediate mold. Remediation. Remediate. Remedy. Clean it up and remedy the problem. <laughs>